statutes, but I thought you were going to understand your commands and I thought you were more than likely to use your righteousness. Your yeah. mercy, your Lord, and yours forever. Despite the total doors of your hands, you have been my generation to generation. I asked the Lord and said, Have mercy on me, heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. The Lord, I fell upon you, saving me, and to your will. For you are my God, and you have fountain of life, and your life shall be like the your mercy come to those who know you. And your righteous of life and heart to you belong to blessing, to you belong to praise, to you belong to glory. O Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, existing from the beginning, now, forever and ever. Amen. It's good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises unto your name, almost high, to show forth to you your mercy every morning and your righteous every night. Holy God, holy mighty God, O Mother of what one of us, have mercy on us, holy God, holy mighty God, who is God of us, have mercy on us, holy God, holy mighty God, who is God of us, have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now forever, and 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 forever, O oh Lord, forgive us our sins. O oh Lord, forgive us our iniquities. O oh Lord, forgive us our trespasses. O oh Lord, visit the sake of your people. Heal them for the sake of your holy name. Our pastors and brethren who have fallen asleep. O oh Lord, rewards their souls. O oh Lord, without sin. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us and you have oh, without sin. Lord, help us to receive our, our supplication. For you is the glory, the dominion, and the triple holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us. Amen. O oh Lord, makes us to pay thanks to our Father for us.
and holy apostles, many prophets and rights men have desired to see a thing which you see and have not seen them, and to hear the thing which you hear and have not heard them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and ears for they hear. We will be worthy to hear and to act according to holy gospel through the prayers of your saints. Pray for the Holy Ghost. Seeing they may see and not perceive, 
and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside, where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who, when they hear the word immediately, receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground, those who hear the word, accept it and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred.
earthquake, drowning, fire, captivity, barbarians, the sword of the stranger and the rising up of heritage. Lord have mercy. The Lord, the seeds, the herbs and the plants of the field this year to bless them.
have given grace to those for the time due but in the priesthood in your holy church to forgive sins upon the earth and to bind and to lose upon the iniquities. We ask and entreat your goodness, O Lover of mankind, for your servant, those who are their heads before your holy glory, to dispense unto us your mercy. Grace of one for our iniquities. If we have committed any sin against you, no longer unknown, through anxious heart, or in deed, or in word, or from faint heartedness. O Master, who knows the weakness of men, as a good one and lover of mankind, O God, connect us and forgive our sin. Bless us, absolve us, purify us, absolve all your people, fill us with your fear, straighten us under your good will. For you are our God, and glory, honor, dominion, and worship our duty together with your Father, Holy Spirit, now and forever, and the age of Church, that they may receive the grace of God in, uh, in having uh, a priest shepherd them. Um, may God continue to bless the services here to, to grow in the new world now. Um, what did we read last Sunday? What was the gospel of last Sunday? Did we read that? Sorry? Did we read that? The son of the widow of Nain, I'm not a king. The son of the widow of Nain was raised. Right? So that was the last Sunday of the blessed month of that title. What are the other resurrections? She was he was raised by our Lord Jesus Christ. What are the other resurrections that our Lord Jesus Christ raised a person in in the scriptures that we know of? We know three of them. So what are the three that we know? The son of the widow of Nain is one of them. What are the other two? Lazarus. And what's the other third one? Jairus, right? Jair, Jairus' daughter. So we'll talk this evening about Jairus' daughter and the resurrection of Jairus' daughter. Um, and St. Augustine uses these three resurrections and he tells us that these resurrections are, um, are symbols of the spiritual life, that one of them was resurrected while they were in the house. So Jairus' daughter, the one that we'll speak about this evening, was resurrected in the house um, and then the son of the widow of Nain last week, where was she? Where was he when he was resurrected? On the way to the tombs to be buried. Um, and then Lazarus was obviously where? Inside the tomb. So St. Augustine tells us in one of his sermons that these are stages of sin. And that if I, if I have the sin still within me, it's just a thought that I've accepted in my mind, God can resurrect me from this if it hasn't turned into an action yet. And then likewise, if, if I've come out and I've turned my, my thought that's a sinful thought, I've accepted and it turned into an action, God can still resurrect me from this. Um, and even if I have a habit of sin, like Lazarus is in the tomb, he's, and, he, and he has a stench to him, he can still resurrect me from this. So we'll just go verse by verse, starting from verse 18. We'll just cover the story of Jairus, uh, his daughter, being resurrected. So we read, while he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. So when we look at this verse, we don't see Jairus' name. It just says a ruler. And we don't know what he's ruling over. It just says a ruler. So this, we're supposed to, when we read the scriptures, especially in the Gospels of St. Matthew, St. Mark, and St. Luke, then we look at the other times in which these stories are presented, so we can learn other things, other details about the story. So in the Gospel of St. Mark and St. Luke, it's in chapter 5 and chapter 8, respectively, in the Gospel of St. Mark and St. Luke. We learn that the ruler's name is Jairus, and we learn that he's a ruler of what? The synagogue. So if he's a ruler of the synagogue, then he is what? He, rich. He, sorry? Rich. He's rich. Okay, he could, be, he could be rich, certainly because he's a ruler, he has authority. But what else, what is his background? He is what? He's Jewish, because he's the ruler of a synagogue. 
So that's important for, as, as the fathers looked at the story, they, they saw that this, that was important, that he's Jewish. Um, and he's a man of authority, but what do we see him doing, even though he's a man of authority? We see him worshiping, right? He came, a ruler came and worshiped our Lord Jesus Christ, saying, so the fact that he's humbling himself is important, that even if we have authority, even if we have a responsibility, that puts us over others, whether in work or in service, or in any aspect of life, in our home, as parents, um, then we still have the ability to be humble, um, especially when we are seeking um, the good of others around us. So, what does he say? He says, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. So what does he believe? From this statement, what do we say that he believes? Okay, he could say, we could say Jesus is the Christ, but at least we can say definitely he believes that Jesus can resurrect his daughter. So he has a degree of faith. There were many people, we know the Pharisees and the scribes and different people at that time. They were leaders of the Jewish people. They knew the scriptures and they knew the prophecies, but they didn't believe that Jesus Christ has the power to raise from the dead. They didn't believe that he is the Messiah. So at least we take from this that he believes in the resurrection of the dead. We all are Christians. We're here in the church. We're praying. But sometimes we have to examine and say, yes, I say Christ is risen. And I say we look for the resurrection of the dead in life of the age to come. But I have to think about it for myself. Do I believe that my body, after it is buried and put in a tomb, will resurrect from the dead? That's what Christ said. He said there is a resurrection to, to righteousness, to life, to eternal life, and resurrection of eternal condemnation. Everyone will, will resurrect. Every human body will resurrect. Um, the fact that he's saying, my daughter, obviously it's a person dear to him. So he's coming, we go to our Lord Jesus Christ with those who are dear to us and everything that is dear and precious to us. If we care about it, if it's something that consumes our thoughts and our mind and our energy, we should bring it before our Lord Jesus Christ. Especially if we see it dying. We see it that is perishing. And he says, what does he ask? He says, come and lay your hand on her and she will live. We say in the, in the liturgy, Abuna says at the end, we say, Amen, 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 I believe, I believe, I believe, and confess to the last breath that this, when he's holding his, his hands, the body of our Lord, this is the life-giving flesh. This is the life-giving flesh. Come and lay your hand on her. He believes that, come and lay your hand on her and she will live. Our Lord Jesus Christ can resurrect without him laying his hand on her. But we, as Christians, when we read the scriptures, we look into it through the lens of the church and we understand from it these, these principles, that his flesh is life-giving. We partake of this flesh. We, we eat it and we drink his blood. And we believe that we can live the life of resurrection when we are partaking of this flesh. And St. Cyril of Alexandria, he actually says that the, the body and the blood that we partake of itself is what will resurrect us. The fact that he is in us, he himself will resurrect us from within us. The next verse so Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. There's something that should strike us immediately in this verse. What should strike us immediately? Why didn't he just raise her from where he is? Okay, right. He could. You're right. He could raise him. He could raise her. Sorry, from from where he is. He doesn't have to go. And there were other miracles that happened in which, like the centurion, he didn't. He didn't go. The, the centurion said, "I'm not worthy that you come under my roof," but he healed him. Type. But but there's something else. More important that should always be in our mind. Yeah. What what what's in this this couple just a couple words? But there's arose. But who? Jesus, Jesus arose, arose. Right? So the fact that it just says Jesus arose, he doesn't have to say it. like the scripture doesn't have to use the word arise or arose a lot, but it does all the time. So when when he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed and walk, you can just say, Take up your bed and walk. He can't take up his bed and walk without arising. So it's implied. But here it says Jesus arose. So it's supposed to remind us of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And another thing that's supposed to surprise us, it says, so Jesus arose, and what does he do? He followed him. Who's following who? Like we're supposed to be following our Lord. But our Lord in his humility, he comes to us wherever we are. We ask him to come, he will follow us and come to be with us. And not only that, but it says, so does his disciples. So I had the blessing of meeting with an, uh, with an elder monastic. He's been living in the desert for, for decades as a, as a hermit. And one of the guidances that he said to tell all the people when we go and do visitations, he said, tell them to praise in their homes. And to summarize it, Yanni, very simply, he said, when they praise in their homes, and this is coming from his mouth, not from my mouth, 
A man that's living a life of praise 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the days of the month, and for years at a time, for decades. So he says, tell them to praise in their homes from the beginning of their marriages. He says, because if they praise in their homes, even if it's just five minutes, then our Lord Jesus Christ will come and be in their midst. And when he's in their midst, then the angels will come. And if the angels come, then the saints will come and the house will be converted into a church. And he said, because the churches that are built are not enough. We have to have churches in our homes. So when we see that the disciples are following our Lord, certainly they're going to be with him. Um, when, we, when we pray in our homes, we're making a place for our Lord and for the disciples and for the angels to come and join us. Verse 20, And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. So, what is our Lord Jesus Christ going to do? What is, what, no, what, was he, where is, what is he originally doing right now? He's going to raise Jairus' daughter. And then suddenly, so something is happening. The next verse says that she said to herself, "When you may touch the hem of it, may touch his garment, I shall be made well." But Jesus turned around, and he goes and he heals her. Okay, we're going to get to that. But the fact that something happened—if you're Jarius, if I'm Jarius in this situation, and my my daughter has just died, and I went to my Lord in faith, and something is stopping him, doesn't matter what's stopping him. I'm going to get frustrated. I'm going to think to myself, "What are, you, what are, you, what are we pausing for? There's no reason for the delay." Like, my daughter just died. That, yani, maybe there's something about it that can, maybe, they don't, they don't have, like, medical, like, equipment around her to see that she's physically, like, that's it, she's dead. Maybe he thinks that he can revive her really quickly. But we don't see Jerry as getting upset. We don't see him being frustrated. And so, likewise, there are some stories in the scriptures that reveal to us that there are obstacles, even if we're walking in the right path of salvation, and we're seeking out our Lord's healing, but we ourselves have to um, be patient in the midst. And we know that other people are going to be healed through other circumstances. So this woman with the issue of blood is also going to be healed. And that doesn't prevent Jarius, his daughter, from being resurrected. But Jarius is learning, um, as St. John Chrysostom says, he says he's learning that he should have faith. Because of his faith, our Lord Jesus Christ will resurrect his daughter. But he's learning through the faith of this woman that he will be able to resurrect his daughter if he's lacking any faith. Um, also, in the story of the paralytic man that we read a couple Sundays ago, um, we see that what is preventing the four men, the four friends of this man, this paralytic man, from going into the house? What prevents them from going into the house? The crowd. Why is the crowd there? They're going to our Lord Jesus Christ. So are they, are they, they're, they're going to hear basically a sermon. They're going to hear the words of, of, of life. So, is that a good reason or a bad reason to be there? It's good, obviously. So, what's preventing them from going and healing the paralytic man? People that are standing around, they're also seeking their salvation, right? So, they have to look for another way to heal this man. Um, so, we shouldn't expect or think to ourselves that just because there's an obstacle or something that comes up in our path of salvation, that that means that it's it's some, it's people that are doing something wrong, or um, that the will of God is not being done, or that I'm not on the right path of salvation. That's why we need spiritual guides to continuously guide us in the path of salvation. So back to the verse, verse twenty. So a woman who had a flow of blood for twelve years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. Okay. We don't learn this in in the the Gospel of Saint Matthew, but again, when we look at the Gospel of Saint Mark and Saint Luke. Anyone remember how old this, this girl is, the little girl? This woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. How old is the girl? 12. She's 12 years old. And so the fathers didn't leave this. St. Jerome said that from the beginning of the girl's life, the girl is, by heritage, she is what? Nationality. She's Jewish, right? And the father said that this woman with the issue of blood is actually a Gentile. So they said that the woman, the, sorry, the, the little girl from the beginning of her life, the Jews from the beginning, are the people of God. And they're sick for 12, like the woman, the, the girl, after 12 years has become sick. Um, and the Jews are rejecting our Lord Jesus Christ at this time. The Gentiles are pagans, right? They're, they're people that don't believe in, in our Lord Jesus Christ. They don't follow the true, the true God. And they've been sick for 12 years figuratively. 
So our Lord Jesus Christ is coming for the Jews and for the Gentiles. And um, it says yani, in, in the book of Acts, St. Paul and St. Barnabas are bold and they're saying the, people, the, the Jewish people are rejecting the message of God. So what do they say? They say, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. They're speaking to the Jewish people because they're the people of God. But since you rejected, since the Jewish people rejected the, the, the message of salvation and judge yourselves unworthy of everla everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. We go to the Gentiles. So the, the fathers meditated a lot on this. In St. Cyril of Alexandria, he says that the Jewish people, so um, Moses in the Old Testament, what happened to him as a child? What did Pharaoh order? Have to kill all, right? The firstborn, the, the sorry, the, the male, the males of the of the Jewish nation. So, what did Moses' mother do? Moses, Moses is by heritage what? Jewish, right? So Moses, uh, Saint Cyril of Alexandria says that Moses' his, his mother, as a Jewish person, puts her son into the waters as one dead, right? So. He says, this is figuratively what the Jewish people rejecting Moses as a symbol or a typology of our Lord Jesus Christ. They're rejecting the, the, uh, the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ coming to them. And then what happens after, our, after Moses is put in the waters as one dead? What happens? The daughter of Pharaoh picks him up. The daughter of Pharaoh is what heritage? Gentiles, pagan, right? So St. Cyril says, the, the Gentiles accept our Lord Jesus Christ. And also St. Cyril says, that the, the, the basket that he was put in, the, the ark, it, it was closed because Pharaoh's daughter had to open it. So it was a symbol of the resurrection as well. But then Pharaoh's daughter had, took, took Moses, right? The Gentiles accepted. But then they didn't leave another fact. What, what immediately had to happen after Pharaoh's daughter picked him up? He had to be fed. fed. Who is he given to to be fed? His own mother. So it's the only mother that got paid to, to, to breastfeed her own son. So the Jewish people, symbolically, as, as St. Paul tells us, will accept our Lord Jesus Christ's salvation in the end before the second coming. So the, the, this, this theme all throughout the scriptures of the Jewish people and the Gentiles being saved um, is constantly there. Um, likewise, in the story of, uh, of the, this woman with the issue of blood, in the other Gospels, in the Gospel of St. Mark and St. Luke, it tells us that there are many people around this woman. They're thronging around and pressing around uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. And as Sayyidina teaches us, like there, there's many people that come to the church. There's many people that seek uh, to, to, to come to the church, just maybe out of routine, we're here. But how many of us, like many people touched our Lord that day, but only one of them that we know of was healed, this woman with the issue of blood. So it's reminding us that when we come, we're all going to partake of the life-giving flesh, God willing, tomorrow. Partake of the body and blood. How much of us, how many of us are going to go out with healing and taking a message for, from now, from tomorrow, until the next time that we're going to partake? What am I going to do with the grace that I've received, with the unity that I've received with, with God? Um, it says, for she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. So again, in verse 22, the beginning, just like we said, Jesus arose. What does he do in this verse? Turned around. Turned around. Our Lord Jesus Christ turns around for us to see us, to heal us, to seek us. Um, and whatever our Lord is doing, we trust that it is for our good. And our Lord Jesus Christ, He didn't turn around. For us, turning around is repentance. Metanoia is to change, to, to turn around, to, to go in a different way from the way that we're going. But our Lord Jesus Christ does not repent. But what does He do? He, he shakes heaven and earth for us. He comes down from the heavens to us um, to save us. And then when He's speaking to this woman with the issue of blood, He's encouraging her. So He's teaching us to say words of encouragement to each other. He says, be of good cheer. So God seeks our joy. Sometimes we say to ourselves, our life, like the gospel this morning, your sorrow will be turned into joy. But we think to ourselves, like, we, we ourselves want to be joyful, but our Lord desires our joy as well. He says, be of good cheer. And he calls her daughter. He doesn't have to call her daughter, but it's a term of endearment. 
So spouses with one another, children with one another, spouse, uh, siblings with one another. It is good for us to say terms of endearment to one another. And then he says, your faith has made you well. So how does he know that she has faith? He only knew that the only, there's only one thing that's revealed to us that she did, which is that she went to touch the hem of his garment with faith. And so we realize the, the, the principle here that our faith is known by our works. If I have faith that the Bible is the word of God, then I will read the Bible. I will, I will know the scriptures. If I have faith that the church is the house of God, I will come consistently to the church and partake of the body and blood. If I believe that it is the body and blood, I will partake with reverence and piety, knowing that I will receive grace for myself throughout the rest of this, uh, the week. Um, in verse 23, when Jesus came into the ruler's house, so our Lord Jesus Christ healed the woman with the issue of blood. Now he's going on the mission that he was originally on to go and heal Jairus' daughter, to resurrect her. So it says, when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing, he said to them, make room, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. And they ridiculed him. So here, one of the early commentators said, okay, they're ridiculing him because he's saying something that, yes, the girl is dead. <coughs> we don't know actually if the girl was dead officially at this time or not. Um, because according to the other gospel, it's not clear. However, the early commentators said that with God, death is like sleep. With God, death is like sleep. For God can bring a dead person back to life sooner than a sleeping person can be awakened from sleep by humans. So before, like, we sometimes take time in waking up. So the early commentator is saying that we ourselves, it take time to, 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 for us to get up and to, to actually start our day. But our Lord Jesus Christ, it is easier for him to resurrect from the dead than from us even to wake up. Um, and he says, And God can sooner restore life-giving warmth to limbs frozen in death than humans can infuse vigor in bodies immersed in sleep. So, here we also see that in verse 24, our Lord Jesus Christ is asking for what? To do the miracle. When we have sins that we're presenting to our Lord, then what is he asking to do the miracle? He says, make room. Make room. I need to have room in my life. My, my thoughts are crowding my mind. Maybe I have one anxiety that constantly comes to my mind and I can't get rid of it. Make room for the Lord to come in and to heal me of, of the other sins and thoughts and desires and, and, and uh, lusts that I have. So that he, can, he himself can disperse the rest. He can have a place of rest in my mind and in my life. Then it says, But when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. He went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. The crowd was put outside. One of the early commentators say that they were put outside because they did not believe that our Lord Jesus Christ would be able to resurrect her from the dead. They were unaccepting Gentiles. They were people that were there that did not accept that he could actually resurrect her from the dead. So we have to be careful of those whom we surround ourselves with so that we are not influenced by unbelieving people. Not that we cannot have association with them, but we have a responsibility to fill ourselves with people that are like-minded and to have constant communion with them so that we ourselves can be encouraged. That's the purpose of the church. One of the main purposes is that we have the support of each other. We come together every week. We praise our Lord Jesus Christ. We praise the Holy Trinity so that we ourselves can have a relationship with Him in a world in which the majority of people around us in society are not. So we need the support of one another. Um, and it says, he took her by the hand. He took her by the hand. So we know that our, when, we, when we ourselves take someone by the hand, like we can imagine a parent with their little child walking. And they take them by the hand, little by little, to resurrect. So our Lord promises us yani, that he will give us the grace of resurrection in the end. But we have to be willing to walk with him and taking steps with him, to take us by the hand. Likewise, also, when he was taken by the hand, in, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, it doesn't say other details, but it says that she walked. She walked. So we have to be willing to walk. If, if I'm asking to be resurrected from a particular sin or a habit, I have to be willing to walk in the path of the Lord. 
willing to offer my, my effort as much as I can to have synergy with God and to walk with Him and to live the life of resurrection, not just have a moment of resurrection. And like we heard in the Vespers Gospel, then I go back. I'm, I'm very joyful. I'm ready to, to resurrect. And then all of a sudden, when the difficulties come and the cares of the world come, then I don't have anything to continue my life with the Lord. And he says, it says he took her by the hand and said in the other Gospels, it says, little girl, I say to you, arise. And likewise, in the son of the widow of Nain, Nain, sorry, he says, young man, I say to you, arise. And so some people take this as a verse and they put it next to their beds for the men and for the women. They just have it next to their beds. So that when we get tempted to just snooze and sleep in the morning, then we're reminded. Our Lord is reminding us and telling us, young man, I say to you, arise. Little girl, I say to you, arise. Come and, and offer yourself, offer your day to me. Um, likewise, also, one of the, um, the, the beauties of our church is the icons, the icons of the church. So in the traditional icon of the resurrection, it's not our Lord Jesus Christ by himself resurrecting from the dead. Rather, it's our Lord Jesus Christ, and he has his hand holding the hand of Adam and Eve. So he's holding them by the wrist, and he's lifting them up. So we ourselves will live the life of resurrection, but this is very symbolic because he's not lifting them up in the icon by his, um, by his uh, hand. Like, oh, it's right here. So in, in the icon over here. But this is not uh, correct. <laughs> it's supposed to be that his hands are around the wrists. They're not supposed to be on the actual hand. It's supposed to be around the wrists, and these are supposed to be crossed as a cross. So, so that this can, uh, it symbolizes that they were lifted up, um, they were lifted up by His grace. By His grace they were saved. And they could not save themselves. So they can't offer their strength with Him to be lifted up. Um, the last thing that we can say about this, this miracle in the Gospel is that our Lord Jesus Christ, He told her, or He says uh, in the other Gospels, to get something for her to eat. Get something for her to eat. And so, uh, Chromatius, one of the early commentators, he says, what, what do we resurrect? When do we resurrect with our Lord Jesus Christ? In baptism, right? We die and we resurrect with him. So, we die and resurrect, and then he says, uh, the, Chromatius, he says, when each believer among us is freed in baptism from perpetual death and comes back to life upon acceptance of the gift of the Holy Spirit, in chrismation, it is necessary that the person also be directed to eat that heavenly bread about which the Lord says, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. So after baptism and chrismation, we as believers, we partake of the body and the blood of Christ immediately afterwards so we can continue to live the life of resurrection and be nourished with him. May God grant us the grace to always live the life of resurrection and prepare our hearts and our minds to receive his body and blood tomorrow. And glory be to our God forever.
us for peace, establish for us for peace, and forgive us our sins. For the power, the glory, the blessing, and the might forever. Amen. Make us worthy of the Lord to pray thankfully for our Father who art in heaven. Now the love of God the Father, the grace of His only begotten Son, our Lord God, Savior Jesus Christ, we give for the Holy Spirit be with you. Go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We are very blessed by the visit of our fathers, the bishops, and our fathers, the priests, and by the visit of all of you. Uh, we're going to have a, a heavy meeting before we leave, and tomorrow morning we're going to start around 7.45, and the door will be closed 7.47. Thank <laughs> you.